Good morning and welcome to the Acropolis of Tyrinth. Why does no one come here? Well, I'm going to answer that, but in order to do so, I'm going to tell you actually why you should come here, because this is an amazing place and it's overlooked and it's the centre of Greek mythology. And I've wanted to do something about Greek mythology for a while, so I'm going to do a little section here. If you don't like it, skip through, look at why you should come here, other than mythology, but you cannot talk about this place without talking about mythology. It's fantastic here. Look at this entrance, just amazing. So my first reason for coming here is one of location. This is not difficult to get to. It's actually dead easy because you're probably going to Mykines or Epithavros or Nafplio. Nafplio is over there on those funny cliffs. Nafplio, as it's also known, was the son of the god Poseidon. And here we have the Argolithic Bay. And then we come round and at the edge of the Argolithic Bay, over here on the right, we have Argos. And then round further, in the far distance, you won't spot it, but I can, we have Mykines. So this is very well located, dead easy to get to, only about 90 minutes from Athens. If you come down in a tour, you should get them to stop here. If you're in a hire car, you must stop here. So up here on the top of the upper citadel, because there are two citadels here, the upper and lower citadel, we have a palace. And this palace predates any of classical Greek. When I say classical Greek, I'm talking about Socrates, Plato, uh, the Acropolis. This was here about a thousand years before. Um, so the Mycenaean civilization rose up from about 1600 BC to about 1250 BC when they suddenly disappeared and there was a Bronze Age collapse because they were considered Bronze Age peoples. And they obviously were based in Mycenae. But you had down here, Tyrinth, and Tyrinth, and we're looking now at the lower citadel, Tyrinth was their port city, or their major port city, because they had several. Epithavros, Palio Epithavros, was another one. I'm not talking about the big theatre, I'm talking about the little village, and I have a video on it. But this was a megaron. This was a stone-walled palace. It had a tiled roof supported by wooden uh, roof slats, and it would have been amazing. But the history of mythology developed, in my opinion, here, in the landscape that we're looking at, in Tyrinth, in Mycenae, down in Argos, over there, and without understanding that, you can't understand this place. Now, the second reason for coming here is this amazing Cyclopean architecture. What do I mean by Cyclopean? Well, in ancient times, classical times in particular, they believed that this place had to be built by the Cyclops because the boulders, the rocks that they used to create these walls are just too big to move by human hand. So they assumed that it had been done by the Cyclops. And this place is wrapped up, as I said, in mythology. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, and the fact that this place is wrapped up in mythology indicates just how important it was to um, the pre-classical peoples. I'm not I'm reluctant to call them Greeks, but they were Greeks. Let's call them Greeks. And you can see, look at the scale of these walls. They're about six metres in thickness. Um, and they're faced with these large stones. But here we are, we're going down this, this what once was a covered corridor, now is open. Um, and I just want to show you at the bottom. So at the bottom here, we have these enormous Cyclopean walls, which were built up to about 18 metres in height. They're about seven or eight metres now. Um, but they were built because this is a small hill and it just wasn't defensible without these walls. So the Mycenaeans built these walls in three phases. And here we have this entrance. This is a smaller entrance. The main entrance is the other side, uh, the eastern entrance. But you can see this appearance, this development of an arch um, is very reminiscent of, for example, the Archidico Bridge, uh, the oldest bridge in the world, which is only 25, about 20, 25 kilometers from here. Um, and then you come in and you can imagine coming in here would have been highly defensive. And that was the whole point of this place. But that's why you come here, because this place is monumental. It's worth exploring. It's just as good as Mycenae. Mycenae is better and more famous because of its Lion Gate and because it has a museum. And that brings me to the first reason that people don't come here. There is no museum. The finds and the museum for this place are located in the centre of Nafplio, in the Nafplio Museum, which is on Syntagma Square. I'll put in a quick shot of it, just in case you want to go and visit, and it's worth it, I have to tell you. But you come here because this place is amazing. Reason number three for me to come here is that this is where Hercules, the mythical god, demigod, from 
mythology, Greek mythology lived. He lived here. His cousin, King Eurythrius, who was king here in mythology, set Hercules out of spite and jealousy, his 12 labours. And Hercules went off and performed his 12 labours round here. In the mountains, over here in the far distance, he performed his first labour. He slew the Nemean lion. We have Nemea over there. Then he came down and over here by the bay, we have Lerna. And Lerna there was a marshy area where Hercules slew the Hydra, the multi-headed snake-like monster. And then he went for his third labour over to these far mountains behind Navplil to Arcadia, where he, he captured Artemis' deer, the fabled deer of Artemis, the Arcadian deer. And for me, actually, this is a, an allegory. This is a political propaganda, these myths. What they created effectively was a story of the, the Mycenaean success and dominance. As the Mycenaeans who started here grew and were successful, they branched out, they conquered new lands. Firstly, they conquered Numea over there. Then they cleared the swamps of Lerna from bandits and snakes and other animals. And then they managed to go over to Arcadia and conquer Arcadia and so on and so forth. The first six myths, the first six tasks of Hercules are set in the Peloponnese and the Nemeans conquered the Peloponnese. Nemeans, sorry. The Mycenaeans conquered the Peloponnese. Then the seventh, he had to capture the Cretan bull. Well, Crete had a civilization, a rival civilization, Minoan civilization, which was actually the dominant civilization in this region until about 1600 BC. What happened in 1600 BC? Well, Santorini, that famous island, erupted and it caused devastation. Um, that devastation darkened the skies. It um, caused tsunamis which wiped away seaside towns. It caused a complete revision, we think, of religion and god worship in Greece. And it allowed the Mycenaeans then to dominate and conquer Crete and become the dominant civilization in pre-Hellenic, pre-classical Greece. So you have this fable, this myth, this number seven task of Hercules where he conquered the Cretan bull. Bull. At the same time, you have Theseus, another mythical figure, killing the Minotaur, the Minotaur again, in Crete, a bull-like creature of mythical powers. And Theseus went on to found Athens. Perseus, who killed the Medusa, the Gorgon, the, the woman with the snake heads who could turn you to stone, founded Mycenae, Mykines, the Mycenaean civilization. All of it's wrapped up together in actual events and propaganda. It legitimized the existence of Argos, where the mother, for example, of both Perseus and Theseus came from. It legitimized Mycenae, with Perseus founding it, and Heracles, the greatest hero of mythology, living here and having his labours set here. After each labour, he came back to this point, with the exception of his twelfth, where he was in Hades and had died. Um, but all of this makes sense to me. Um, I'm probably wrong, but if you're going to understand Mycenaean culture, if you're going to understand classical Greece, if you're going to understand mythology, you have to come here. If you don't come here, you don't see where it all started and why it all started. And just what a small area this is, how close everything is. You know, I, as a 13 year old kid, had to do Latin and we had to do mythology and I loved mythology, but I had no concept at the time of how big or small the Greek world was. I imagined it was enormous. It wasn't at all. It was a very small world with very few people in it. So, in 1620 BC or thereabouts, Santorini, the volcano, erupted and it caused devastation in this region. The skies were dark for two years, the harvests failed, there was an enormous tsunami that wiped out coastal settlements and villages. And quite naturally, the Greeks, the Mycenaeans at the time, um, assumed that they got it wrong, that the female gods that they were worshipping at the time, perhaps Aphrodite, perhaps Athena, were not the most important gods. And maybe it was the male gods particularly Poseidon, obviously, the god of the sea. And it was at that time that I think, really, these myths and legends began to take the shape that we know today and became a, a social and political tool for the ruling elite 
and the civilizations at the time to assert their legitimacy and their dominance. And obviously it had a, a huge political impact because the Minoan civilizations collapsed and allowed this civilization, the Mycenaean civilization, to rise. The name of Heracles, of course, hints at this godly switch, this change that occurred after the eruption of Santorini, in that Heracles, Hercules, the Greek name Heracles, begins with the name Hera. And it's thought that perhaps, possibly, originally, Hercules was Hera's champion. And then once this switch occurred, once this reverence of male gods started to occur and Zeus became the king of the gods, it was no longer acceptable for the king of mythological characters, the hero of the Mycenaean culture, to be associated with Hera as her champion. So they switched it to being Zeus's champion. But of course, they couldn't change the name. The name was one of historical significance for the Greeks. My fourth reason for coming here is that there's actually an awful lot to see and do. Um, but this isn't one that makes it easy. You have to come here with a degree of knowledge or understanding or research to get the best out of it, because this is not like Mykines, for example, or Epidavros, where effectively they feed you the information on a plate. This is a place where they manage it, but there is no museum. They don't feed you the information. You have to come either just to look and be or inspired by the Cyclopean architecture, by the walls here, by the dominance that this would have exerted over the, the land, or you come here with a degree of knowledge. And that brings me really to reason number five for coming here. If you want to understand prehistory, if you want to understand Greek culture three and a half thousand years ago, the Mycenaeans, you have to come here. If you don't come here, you can't understand the Mycenaean culture. You can't understand perhaps how mythology that so dominated European culture for the last three and a half thousand years arose and why it arose. How it was perhaps based in the facts of events that happened here and happened in this surrounding area, in Paleopithros, in Mycenae, etc. You have to realise Mycenae was not the only place that the Mycenaeans existed. I mean, just look at these walls. That in itself, and the fact that Her Heracles, Hercules lived here, demonstrates, illustrates, shows just how important this place was. And that's why you should come here, because this is a very impressive, very important place. So I've just driven around the coast here from Tirinth over there, Navplio over there, to the little village of Lerna. And this is where Hercules slew the Hydra. And all of this area here used to be marshland. So Lerna may not look like much now, but in ancient times from about 2700 BC through to the end of the Mycenaean civilization, about 1250 BC, it was an incredibly important religious center, mainly because of this spring here. This spring was considered traditionally to be one of the entrances to Hades, the underworld. This is where Hades descended into the underworld in Greek mythology. This is where Dionysus, the grandfather of Perseus, was drowned by Perseus and resulted in Perseus being exiled from Argos. We're in, in Lerna, but we're very close to Argos and establishing Mykines. So this place was incredibly important. And up on the hill under this roof there, I'm not sure if we can go in or not, it's normally shut, is a Mycenaean villa building, house, whatever you want to call it, called the Tiled House. So we'll go and see if we can get in and have a look or not. So this place in Lerna is incredibly important because it predates the Minoan and the Mycenaean civilizations. The buildings that are here date from before 2000 BC. So we're talking about 500, 600, 700 years before what we're looking at in Tirinth. And we'll go back to Tirinth in a minute. But you can see the construction is different. This is a palace. This is known as a house of tiles for obvious reasons. And it explains why, to me, this place, Lerna, was so important to the Mycenaeans because their ancestors perhaps came from here, or certainly the peoples before them did. And they must have seen this place with reverence. You know, you have this fantastic religious spring we've just looked at. You have this 
amazing religious site. And you have these buildings which predate the Mycenaean civilization. I mean, I get excited because the Mycenaean civilization predates the Hellenic civilization, the classical civilization. But here you have something which predates the Mycenaean civilization. And it, for me, that is why these myths and legends rose up here. Why Perseus? Why Hercules? Why Dionysus? Why Hades? They were all here because of the civilization, the settlement, effectively. It wasn't a civilization, it was a settlement that existed here at Lerna. This little unassuming village, now known as Mili. Um, just astonishing. Here we can see a Mycenaean grave shaft. They say Mycenaean, but this place, as I said, is 500 years before the Mycenaeans. You know, so incredibly important to them. Just astonishing. And behind the House of Tiles, we have more um, foundations, shall we say, of houses. Again, dating from 2300 BC, 2200 BC. So perhaps even before the palace, the House of Tiles that we've just looked at. Um, this one, 2750 BC. These are very, very, very old settlements. This place was also fortified. This wall here, which has some elements reminiscent, I think, of Tirinth and the Mycenaean culture, um, was built about 2500 BC. So a thousand years potentially before Tirinth as we see it. Um, but there are elements here which are very similar. They buried their dead in grave shafts, um, exactly as the Mycenaeans did. So effectively what we're looking at at Lerner is probably the pre-Mycenaean settlement, um, certainly the pre-civilization settlement. And no wonder you get the mythology based around here, because in the times of the Mycenaeans this was an incredibly important religious place. This was a place of the ancestors, whereas now it's just a small village by the seaside, pretty insignificant. It shows how things change. Just astonishing. And as with Tirinth, no one comes here. I'm less surprised about people not coming here. It's a little bit out the way. It's a small site. Um, most people have probably never heard of it. But God, you should come and look at this place as well. If you're in the area, if you're in a car, come to Lerna, now known as Mealy. Beautiful place on the seaside as well. But let's go back to Tirinth. So, I've talked about why I think this place is so fantastic, why I think you should come here. I've mentioned a couple of reasons of perhaps why people don't come here. Um, but the reality is that people don't come here because you have limited time. There are other sites, Mycenae, Epidavros, etc. I keep mentioning them. And this gets passed by because people go to the other sites. It doesn't mean this is any less impressive. But, number two, there's no museum here. People understandably want to see what was found here. If you want to see what was found here, you have to go to Nafplio. Um, you may well go to Nafplio. The museum only stays open till 3.30, so it's not very helpful. You go to Mycenae, then maybe you come here, then you go to Nafplio for lunch. Museum's shut, not helpful. Ultimately, the third reason is if it's not on the tourist trail, if people aren't coming here, if, I mean, look at these arches, just amazing. These walls are so big. If people aren't coming here, if people, the tours, the tour buses aren't coming here, then of course you're not going to come here. It's not going to be well known. The reasons people don't come here are practical. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've wanted to do something about mythology for a while and this just seemed like the perfect place to do it. When you travel around Greece, when you see the Mycenaean culture, when you see the sites that existed and you start to relate them to the stories that they told, Heracles, Theseus, Perseus, who by the way was Hercules' grandfather, and Eurythrius' grandfather, they were cousins, um, you begin to get an appreciation for how the culture and the, the mythology, the myths themselves arose, at least in my opinion. So, unusual video for me. I won't normally get into it so much, but I really want to cover mythology a little bit. Um, hope you watch some of my other videos, and I look forward to doing more for you soon. Thank you.